Why are Formula One cars open wheeled? Yeah, why? I mean, why do they differ from the prototypes from the World Endurance Championships which have covered wheels? Is it better to cover the wheels or not? Well, the answer is quite simple and a bit dumb also, <laughs> to be honest. Formula One cars are open wheeled because the rules say so. It's the only logical answer I can give to this question. I'm serious. So would the engineers cover the wheels if they could? Yes. Okay, but why does the rulebook impose something which is not beneficial for the car? Well, to understand why Formula Ones are open wheeled, we must go back in time. April 28th, 1887. The first race in history for cars with an internal combustion engine took place. The winner was Georges Bouton driving a De Dion. That was an incredible victory with an incredible fight because that day Georges Bouton was racing alone. Yeah, he was the only <laughs> participant to that race. I mean, 1887, there were no cars at the time. But why was that race important? Because that day, the passion for racing for cars for motorsport was born. So a few years later, in the first decade of the 20th century, building a car was no joke. I mean, even starting up a car those days was difficult, not to mention driving at maximum speeds. And considering that those cars were hard to build, what do you do when you're trying to build something which is hard to build? Well, you try to make it as simple as possible. And what was the simplest thing to do? A car with open wheels. Keep in mind that 100 years ago, there were no robots, no big industries, no carbon fiber. I mean, those bodyworks were handmade, taking large aluminum sheets crafted by artisans. And I mean, there were more than artisans, there were actually sculptors, incredible skilled men capable of crafting incredible shapes. So as a consequence, covering their wheels was time consuming and super expensive. So the street cars simply used mud guards, which were quite simple to build, while the race cars for simplicity, cost and weight were open wheelers. And the first complete bodyworks with covered wheels for race cars came only in the 30s. And actually those were special bodyworks conceived only to make the high speed records. And those bodyworks were called streamliners. For instance, one of the most famous examples was the Mercedes W154 or the Auto Union Type C, which were the best racing cars of that era. Suddenly, the World War II came. And considering that there were other priorities, the international sport competitions and the passion for more sports stopped. And you know what happens when you take a big passion and stop it for a certain amount of time? Well, it happens that as soon as it restarts, it will restart bigger than before. And that's exactly what in 1945 happened. The passion for more reports exploded and now we're talking about a serious business. The European Championship became the World Championship with federations and rules on top of it. So two main championships were created. The first one was the Formula One World Championship, which was created for single-seaters, short races and focused on the driver. For example, think about that the first Formula One Championship didn't have the Constructor World title, only the Driver World title. And the second championship was the Sports Car World Championship. It was a more endurance championship and it was specifically created for the manufacturers. So the most important thing was not the driver, but the manufacturer. And the idea of the championship was simple, to let all the constructors show how good their car were. That championship was some kind of business card or promotion for the manufacturers. And that's why we're talking about endurances, because if those cars were able to sustain long races, it meant that those cars were reliable and good. And the important thing is that almost 70 years passed from that first race of 1887. The technology evolved and now the street cars were not open wheeled anymore but they used to go with covered wheels. And the reasons were safety, cleanliness, elegance. So all the manufacturers wanted to follow one simple rule. If we win the race on Sunday, we will sell the cars on Monday. Therefore, those race cars used covered wheels. And that was the path that the sports car championship followed for the rest of the history. So what about Formula One? Was it the same? Well, it's not that simple for Formula One. Because at the beginning, in 1950, the Formula One championship started racing with the voiturette created before the war. And those cars were all open wheeled. And the reason is pure logic. Single seaters, lightweight, simple to build. So as a matter of fact, the first Formula One world title were won by Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. 
which were using open-wheeled cars. And for some years that was the norm, until in 1954 Mercedes came to Formula 1. And you know what happens when Mercedes gets to Formula 1, they dominate. Those cars named W196 were simply unbeatable. Their technological level was just too advanced. And one of the main reasons was actually a very clever solution. Mercedes had two different types of bodyworks. One with open wheels and another one with covered wheels. That was a brilliant solution and they took inspirations from those races in the 30s where those cars with streamliners used to make the speed records. And the idea behind it was very simple. If those cars were capable of reaching super high speeds, why don't we replicate those bodyworks for the fast circuits? Well, for sure there was a big disadvantage, because by covering the wheels those cars were super heavy, like 100 kilograms more. But on the straight they were so fast that nobody could catch them. That was a brilliant solution. Open wheels on slow tracks, cover wheels on fast tracks. And Mercedes won the world title. Well, one curious anecdote is that Juan Manuel Fangio, one of the best drivers in history, said that he hated those covered wheels, because with those covers he wasn't able to see the wheels, he wasn't able to be precise in the driving. But anyway, the car was so fast that they dominated. However, the dominance didn't last long, because the year after, in 1955, following a huge crash in Le Mans, where tens of people were killed, Mercedes decided to withdraw from racing. And guess what? With Mercedes, also the covered wheels abandoned the Formula 1, because starting that year, the rulebook prohibited covering the wheels. And you may wonder why? Well, the reason is simple. They did it for cost reason and to distinguish the Formula 1 from the sports car. Well, the problem is that people realized at that point that covering the wheels made cars faster. So for many years, the engineers tried to replicate that solutions in any way. For example, they used some kind of mudguards or one of the most brilliant solutions in history was the TRL P34, where they decided to put six wheels to make the front wheel smaller and therefore replicate the effect of covering the wheels. Okay, but at this point you may be wondering, what are the advantages of covering the wheels? Why are they so much faster? Well, the explanation is pretty simple, aerodynamics, nothing more. The open wheels are an aerodynamic nightmare. Okay, well, open wheels have some advantages. For example, the driver can see the wheels and can be more precise, or they cool down much easier. But for the aerodynamics, the open wheels are a disaster. Because you have those huge rubber blocks that rotate at super high speed, and by rotating they generate turbulences, which increase the drag of the car, therefore slowing it down on the straight. And there's more, because those turbulences disturb the flow that goes under the car and to the diffuser, creating a huge mess in the whole aerodynamic flow. And for example, do you remember the barge boards? Those things very popular in Formula 1, which were banned from 2022? Well, their purpose was exactly to counterbalance those turbulences created by the front wheel. And don't think that the rear tires don't create problems. Because have you noticed these slots that you see in the last portions of the floor? Well, they're designed to manage the tire square coming from the rear tires. Anyway, as a matter of fact, you probably noticed that from 2022, the Formula 1 cars have some sort of mud guards which cover the front wheels. Well, their purpose is exactly to reduce the turbulences coming from the front wheel. And have you ever seen the Red Bull X 2010? That monster car designed by Red Bull, which you can only drive in Gran Turismo. That was designed as an experiment to be the most performing car in the world. And how did they design the wheels? covered, because if you're allowed to, you definitely want to cover the wheels. So the covered wheels are perfect, right? Well, not exactly, <laughs> because for example, the Le Mans prototypes must have some openings on the mud guards, because they must avoid the air going down the car creates a lift that may cause this. Yeah, which is not good. <laughs> also, the covered wheels are heavier because you add mass on the car. But nowadays, with the carbon fiber, that additional mass is not that much. For sure, not 100 kilos like the first Mercedes. So, to answer the initial question, do you want to know why Formula cars have open wheels while all the other cars don't? It's just a tradition, nothing more. I can guarantee you that if the engineers could cover the Formula 1 wheels, they would do it. And what do you think about that? Do you think that maybe in the future we can see Formula 1 cars with covered wheels?